Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Indigo Communications. We are live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Alan Ruff, Alison McConnell and Tam McManus are with me, Peter Martin. Thank you very much to you for showing your support throughout the season. It's been absolutely magnificent. We have subscribers constantly um, just joining the football family and of course thousands and thousands of people now realising we are regular on our YouTube channel Monday to Friday at 4 o'clock live and there's lots of other unique content so great that you're joining us and we really do appreciate the fact that you hit the subscribe button. So with that in mind, um, it's probably the first time Ruffy we've started a show, uh, we usually do a little preview on Facebook but it's probably the first time ever, you know, just a complete lack of professionalism, somebody couldn't make it on time, you know. Is that yeah, fair? Well, I thought at one o'clock last night there might have been three or four people. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I it to myself. I thought I, I could see you just looking at the camera and going, hello everybody. <laughs> Uh, the PFA Awards uh, were absolutely magnificent. We're delighted Ali could make it with us. Uh, both of us have lost a tenner because we thought she wasn't going to make it. But um, Ali's here. Tam is here as well. Tam's fresh because um, Ruffy, he just has to do what his wife tells him. Yeah. And if he's not going to an awards ceremony, he's not going. Yeah, well, that's the same in his life, isn't it? You know, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, you're not going anywhere. You're not going. To, that's yeah. what happens. That's you know? not true. Yeah, absolutely. No, of course it isn't. No. She's not like that all the time, believe me. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anyway, lots to talk about. Derby draw seems to have put Celtic in the driving seat for the title. Ange Postecoglou picks up the PFA Scotland Manager of the Year. Callum McGregor's the Player of the Year. It was a kind of a, a really dominant night for uh, Celtic at the PFA Awards. The players vote for it, the managers vote for it, and that's how it all panned out. Glasgow City's Priscilla Chinchilla uh, picked up the Women's Player of the Year title. Um, and as far as the main stories that we're going to be talking about, of course, Celtic and Rangers uh, in that match. Rangers looking to Leipzig on Thursday. Dundee possibly staring at the trap door now to the Championship. And who's going to seize the moment in the playoffs? These are all the burning issues. And as time runs out down south, can Liverpool get the quadruple? Will Man City slip up in the title race there? So... Lots to think about. Here's how it all panned out in the Premiership in Scotland over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. It was Aberdeen 1, Dundee 0. Dundee United 1, Motherwell 0. Hearts and Ross County couldn't get a goal between them. Livingston edged out Hibs by 1-0. to nil. And St Mirren pulled off, well, is it a surprise win against St Johnston by a goal to nil? And then Celtic and Rangers, you couldn't separate them. 1-1 one, one. and uh, over the course of the 90 minutes... Was it a fair result, Ruffy? Yeah, I think in the end it was. I think the first half, uh, Celtic obviously got the goal. They had a couple of chances. Uh, it won nothing. I thought when it got to the 60th minute, I thought Celtic had maybe decided Rangers need to win. We were winning one nothing. They sort of backed off a bit. And all credit to Rangers. Uh, they knew they had to win. And they threw everything at it. They had the chances in the second half. Scored one and missed a couple. So I think it was eatsy peetsy for the, the two halves. But I think that a draw on the whole was a correct result. Yeah, I think, Tam, it's fairly obvious that Celtic would be happy to come out of it with a draw. Because, you know, no, no quarter given, no quarter lost. No, I think that was an ideal result for Celtic. I think I totally agree with Ruffy. The last 25 minutes, half an hour, I thought Celtic, you know, were quite happy just to hold on for that draw. Don't get beat. And then, you know, you make yourself massive favourites to go and win the title. Rangers really went for it. Um, with a couple of chances, great chance for Sakala towards the end. Got to go across the goalkeeper, you know, tries to do him at his near post uh, and misses it. But Celtic hung on for the draw, and I think that makes Celtic, you know, strong, strong favourites for the league. Yeah, uh, you can give us your view on that as well. Um, Alison, over the course of it, it, it just, for me, emphasised the fact that you really can't gauge who is the better of the two of them. I thought, I, I think it was an indication of the strength of Rangers to go to Celtic Park and look really strong. Um, and you only have to look at what they're achieving in Europe. There's, it's neck and neck between them. There's no one that you think is an out-and-out -out dominant one, I think. Yeah, I think... I think there's not much between the two squads at all. I think that would even be borne out just if you, you look at the head-to-heads between them this season. I think that's two wins apiece and a draw. I thought there was very little between them at Hamden too, just a few weeks back in the Scottish Cup semi-final. I would agree with you. I think uh, it, it's very delicately poised. I think Rangers will 
lament their form after the, the Christmas break <coughs> as to why they're in the position that they're in now. I think Celtic have looked strong since then. Uh, although you'd have to say, I think Celtic do look a bit leggy now, just going into the the last few weeks of the season. But I think you just you wouldn't see by them now. I think uh, given the lead that they've got and also the goal difference that they've got with a with a cushion of 19, 19 goals, better off. Yeah, well, let's get into the meat and bones of it. You can give us your view as well. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, over the piece, I looked at the uh, the game first half. I, I thought there was one specific moment. We'll hear from Ange Postecoglou uh, and get the thoughts of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. But the games now are, are changing dramatically, guys, because they make that many substitutions. The change that changes, obviously, the starting team selection. I thought Celtic. I mean, I thought Rangers on the second half should have won the match because they just looked so dominant. Celtic were all over the place. Maeda misses the sitters in the first half. But the, the other key issue here is they brought on three substitutes, Tam, and I thought they lost their way, Celtic. Yeah, I think that Celtic, Rangers have still got a stronger squad. I know it sounds different, obviously, because Celtic only won the league, but I think in Do terms you think of... Do a stronger squad? I think bench I th looked weak. I think, Rangers have got a, I think Rangers have got a stronger squad because I just think... You know, Celtic starting 11, I think, is probably better than Rangers, and it's worn out the results with the league. But I just think you know, it was the same in the semi final. Rangers got stronger as the game went on. The subs yeah. we were bringing on, Celtic, I think, get weaker. There's still, there's still plenty of room for, for improvement in Celtic's squad. I think they're starting 11, they're their strongest team is more than a match for Rangers. But I thought, again, you know, it was similar to the semi final where Rangers were getting stronger and bringing better quality on, and kind of first team players in Celtic were getting worse and kind of held on towards the end. So. No, I think you're right. I think the substitutions did. They did, they did influence the game, but Celtic just managed to hang on towards the end because Rangers were pummeling them. Yeah. The last 15, 20 minutes, they were going all out for that to get that winning goal. <laughs> Celtic just managed to hang on for the draw. Yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, Tam on that, uh, Ruffy. I thought this, the second half, Rangers just looked as if they were playing their European football, you know, mm. passing it about, waiting, really pushing Celtic at, at every opportunity. And at, at one point, I thought to myself, I don't think they've got. I don't think the Celtic have got a game plan to get out of this. No, I thought I thought the Celtic players that come on just get caught up in it. You know, I think the game is obviously motoring on, and when you come off the bench onto the park, sometimes it takes you a while to get up to the pace of what's happening. And I think that's hap what happened with Celtic. <laughs> but I still think Celtic thought that at one nothing. They couldn't see Rangers scoring. You know, I think that's yeah. the mentality of right. We're winning one nothing. They need two to beat us. It doesn't even look as if they're going to get one. And then all of a sudden, Rangers get one. And then you've got a decision to make. And I thought some of the Celtic players struggled a wee bit. That centre half boy gives me palpitations. Yeah, you know, every yeah. time he's, he gets drawn out of that centre half, Starfield. Every time he gets drawn out of that centre half position, God, he, gets, he just gets done every time. Yeah, you know, but. Uh, I think they'll strengthen again next year and I think he could be one that could suffer. Yeah, um, I think Andrew Davison, I'm going to make this point, I think Andrew Davison makes a very good point on our feed. He says, it's the first time in a while the referee hasn't been mentioned. I thought John Beaton had a very good game. I think John Beaton did have a very good game. I think if we are quick, Ali, to batter referees and criticise them, there wasn't anything in that game that you thought to yourself, oh, wait a minute, that, that really had a, a major effect on the game. There was one... With Aribo, he could have got right or wrong when Aribo went down. Yes, with the dive. The, Celtic, the dive. Yeah. First, first look at that, you might have thought there was some kind of contact there. And that would have put the referee in, under a bit of pressure. Yeah, but he called it. And he got it right, bang on. But that's the kind of decisions that we would be sitting here talking about him. Yeah. You know, if he'd given a penalty. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he'd a, a fairly decent game. I can't, the only, I can't really think of anything. Of, of, well, isn't, of that, no, isn't that the good would, point? <laughs> which, would, which, which would tell you something in itself, yeah. I think, when you're not discussing. I think, um, yeah, I think there'll, there'll always be criticism to referees from, from either camp, but I think it's been notable too this season that Ange Postacoglu resists being drawn into any criticism of referees, regardless of whether or not they've had good games or not. He seems to have a policy of just, uh, you know, just uh, ignoring anything about it. He never, ever... Uh, ways in, yeah. in which I think is quite interesting. Ruffy, you're a goalkeeper. 
What about Joe Hart's save? Super save down low. It's, just, it's the kind of save that Craig Gordon's been making all yeah. season. But again, big goalkeepers make the big saves. And and that, he's making the saves that the other goalkeepers at Celtic weren't making. Mm. And it just shows you the difference. You know, the right time, the right place. He had another one as well, which was pretty straightforward. But that one in particular was good. And, and if we're looking for compliments for certain players who attract attention, grab the spotlight... Um, Rangers fans might have been thinking to themselves a couple of weeks ago, oh my God, there's no Morello, so Roof's gone. This boy, fair play to him, has stepped up to the plate. Even when there was a wee shift of position in the second half, suddenly he, he looked really dangerous, Sakala. No, he did. I think he's, he took his goal you know, really, really well. Yeah. You know, it's, at first I thought Joe Hart at the front at the near post, but he's so accurate. He hits it really well. It's, it just skims inside of the post and goes in. I don't think you can... You can look too too far at the goalkeeper, but he's the one he's goes, he goes through. He tries to do him in air post, and I suppose he's got to go across him. I think that's the only one, but he caused Celtic all sorts of problems. His pace when they played him through the middle, and that will give Rangers a lot of confidence going into the game on Thursday. I think because I think it will give him a lot of confidence as well. You know, scoring in, a, in an old firm game going into Thursday. You know, his confidence will be high. And that he could be the guy. He could be the man. The Ranger supporters are looking at him going, he can win his, he can get us through the, the final. Yeah, I think it's a good point. He deserves a lot of praise. Um, let's talk to someone who understands being beaten at the near post um, because obviously Iran uh, in 78 <laughs> and then Adair in 82. <laughs> Ruffy, no, were, you, I'd, were you I'd, disappointed with him losing at no, that near post? Time, I thought about, but see if you'd asked Joe Hart, I bet he thought he could have done better. Yeah, but, but the quality he is and the saves that he makes, you know, I I thought he might have done better than what he did, and I'm sure he would have thought, but I wouldn't blame him yeah. because it was a great strike. Mm. Yeah, uh, Ange Postecoglou now thinks Celtic in a strong position to finally land that title. I don't know about unassailable, but it's we're in a strong position. You know, we've got three games to go, two of them at home. We've been, you know, so strong at home all year, including today we didn't lose. So, you know, from our perspective, it gives us a great opportunity um, to 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 sort of take advantage of the, the position we're in. And, you know, the thing with us is we, we don't want to sort of just get there. We want to finish strong and we've got three games to do that. Yeah, um, so Celtic in the box seat, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, I think fairly honest in his assessment of where Rangers are now with regards to not being able to get a win there, uh, this is what he had to say, I think only a win would have given us a chance to close the gap even more, it will be more difficult for us now, I could have asked for more, I couldn't have asked for more from the players, especially in the second half, we pushed really hard, we did very well in those moments, created great chances, hit the post, what can you ask for more? The only thing is we didn't score the big chances we had. We did everything we could to win. But in the end, we are two points short. So, And I think that's a, a fairly honest assessment of it. And you could tell at that point that Giovanni Van Bronckhurst looked at it 10 minutes to go. Listen, destiny's in your own hands here. You can suddenly just ignite our championship bid. You've got to throw caution to the wind. I thought it was a really exciting finale to the game. I actually yeah. thought both teams went for it. I actually thought Celtic were still trying to get a winner in the last few, last ten minutes or so too. And Rangers, you you could tell, just you know, pull out all the stops, put Celtic under as much pressure as possible. And and but for the width of a post, they would have got it. Um, but I think the challenge now for Rangers is to go and and recover, and rally themselves to go again because it's an enormous game on Thursday night. It, it, really is a semi-final, the potential of booking a place in the Europa League final, I think the, the tie is very delicately poised, I think uh, you've seen what Rangers have done at Ibrox this season when they've got a full crowd behind them, I don't think anyone would write them off. Yeah, absolutely um, as ever with these games, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I just think that the uh, there are certain people who just go to a game and they've got no interest in football by the way, they are, they are bigots, they are morons, they're criminals, they're thugs and uh, some of the um, fans' behaviour, throwing you know bottles at each other, is just ridiculous. To go to a game and, and think, I'll throw a bottle and harm someone, is outrageous. Yeah, again, it's a minority that spoil it for everybody else. Uh, both sides, I believe, you know, are to blame. So, you know, and I thought there was a fair enough distance between the two fans, sets of fans. I thought the police had done particularly well, you know, yeah. to keep a, a large distance, but. If there's a date set there and they're going to do that, it's very hard to stop them. Yeah, absolutely. It is the uh, police who have to go and charge them. Um, you only have to look at the encounters over this season and the conduct. 
if it's not ripping up seats and broken glass on the pitch and throwing bottles at each other. Um, of course, sectarian singing is another part of it as well. Um, but the police have to deal with it and, uh, you know, if they catch these people, hopefully they'll be dealt with accordingly. Anyway, apart from that, um, Leipzig, they play against Borussia Mönchengladbach tonight before they think about Thursday. Um, so I think Domenico uh, Tedesco is going to try and play as strong a side as he possibly can, but with one eye on Ibrox in Thursday alley. It's a difficult week <coughs> for them, I think, if you think of the, the recovery time from the game and, and travelling time. It's, it's not a lot of time for them to prepare for it. Rangers will look to capitalise on, on any kind of lethargy, but I think it's a very interesting tie. It's, it's intriguing how Rangers will go about it. I think they'll, they'll try and go for the jugular, as you've seen throughout their European campaign, especially at Ibrox this season. Yep, OK. Um, you can give us your view on that. Thanks to so many of you um, for offering your opinion on the game. Some people thinking they deserve to win at Celtic. Some people thinking Rangers deserve to win it. Um, and, of course, lots of good insight into some of the players and their performances as well. As ever on our uh, feed on our YouTube channel, the majority of people actually love their team and can talk sensibly about football. So we actually welcome more and more of you to hit the subscribe button with us. <clears throat> I'm delighted to say the next game we're going to talk about is Aberdeen's win against Dundee. You might not be aware of this, Ruffy, but um, uh, the legend that is Andrew Shiny, um, both Andrew and I have known each other for a long, long time in broadcasting we're delighted to get him this year um, and I think we're into the last couple of weeks before he hangs up his mic with us I thought he was going to hang up his mic in December um, because <laughs> at least he's going to be a win well because we're going to have to pay a fortune Tom just to get somebody to talk him through how bad you know help him every day go look it's not that bad here watch, watch the 83 cup final again <laughs> but uh I'm delighted he's, he's with us today. Andrew, a win. How do you feel about it? Uh, relieved, I think, is probably the, the best way to describe it because it wasn't a great game of football. And to be perfectly honest, Dundee gave as good as they got. And But for Joe Lewis producing his best performance of the season, Aberdeen would have trailed at the interval. And I think they would have found it very, very difficult to get back. But uh, a much better second half from Aberdeen. Well, they call them eventually gave them a penalty. Um, there was a contentious uh, call that he had early in the second half, which he decided was a corner. <coughs> it looked more of a penalty than the penalty that he gave. But um, when the penalty arrived, Lewis Ferguson did his usual job. Um, there was, it must be ice that runs through the veins of that guy. Um, he showed no nerve whatsoever. Stuck the ball past Harry Sharp and Aberdeen got the victory. And then, just to make it even better, we heard that St Mirren had beaten St Johnston. So, although they're not mathematically safe from the playoffs, they've taken a huge stride towards avoiding that. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment of Aberdeen's predicament. Uh, just before we talk about Dundee, I imagine now, Andrew, for anyone who is a Dons fan, I, I was talking to a few Dons fans last night about, you know, what it's like to be in the city, in a one-team city, in an area which in Aberdeen is far away from the madding crowd. You know, sometimes if you're a local, you know this better than anyone, sometimes if you're a local newspaper or you're a local radio station, if you are highly critical of Aberdeen as a club, you leave yourself wide open to the classic, well, you're, you know, you're barred or we're not happy with your, your criticism of us, you know. <clears throat> and I think sometimes it's very difficult. You become almost caught up in a bubble of, you know, being devoid of really serious criticism. But I, I don't think you've ever been guilty of that. When you look at Aberdeen, are you expecting that mass clear out of people who are just not good enough to wear that jersey? Yeah, there's going to be a, a big clear out, but I must point out that Aberdeen now is a two club city. Uh, Cove Rangers uh, yeah. are part of Aberdeen uh, and worthy winners of League One. Uh, I saw a picture that their kit man Adrian Thompson had posted of himself with you, Ruffy, last night. Um, two legends together. 
And, uh, you know, let's not forget that, that Cove um, have had a fantastic season. And there was a lot of talk, I'll tell you, over the last week about the potential for a championship derby between Aberdeen and Cove Rangers next season. <laughs> there may well be a League Cup tie. <coughs> but, um, uh, no, I... Uh, I think when you're in a, a city which is dominated by one club, shall we put it that way, um, you, you've got to be a wee bit careful with your criticism, but there's been nothing to celebrate at all this season for Aberdeen fans, and I think it does need a big clear out. Um, you looked at that game on Saturday, first half, the two central defenders, Declan Gallagher and David Bates, were so nervy, it was unbelievable and fortunately it was the youngsters, Calvin Ramsey Jack McKenzie, Connor Barden Lewis Ferguson who still remember only 22, they were the ones who dragged Aberdeen into that second half and increased the tempo, made the game safe for Aberdeen, so yeah there's a big uh, clear out needed I'm not sure what the quality of player Jim Goodwin is going to be able to bring in because I don't know what kind of transfer budget you'll get but there is a possibility that Ramsey will go there's talk of Liverpool, Leeds United, Manchester United being interested in him Lewis Ferguson is always a target for big clubs because he's now an international player so they may be able to fund uh, some changes to the squad but th there, there needs to be a change in the mentality of the squad I think um, we saw this season that it was going to be a strong league with, you know, Hearts back in there, with the two Dundee sides in there, and, you know, it, it was always going to be difficult to, to get into the, the, the upper echelons of the league. But everybody expected Aberdeen to do it. And maybe, just maybe, over the last seven or eight years, we've been the best of the rest. But because there's better teams have come in this season and we haven't improved, we've found our truer level. So um, there needs to be an improvement on that for next season because I'm sure no Aberdeen manager, no Aberdeen fans, no Aberdeen board member is going to want to see the team in the bottom six next season. Yeah, um, I take your point on Cove Rangers, um, although I wouldn't rule them out coming into the top flight with their ambition, the way they're going. Ruffy, were you aware last night that you get your, your uh, picture taken with the Cove Rangers kit man? <clears throat> No, I don't think so. No, no. Uh, were you aware of? Were you aware of? Were you aware of anybody from no. Cove Rangers being near no. you? No. Oh, yeah. But when was that? Hopefully, yeah. it was at the end of the night. <laughs> Brilliant. As soon as Andrew, as soon as Andrew said that, there, I went. Rothy will not remember. No, no chance. Unless there's evidence provided. Um, and just a word, Andrew, on Dundee. Um, they're heading down to the championship. You know, I think, uh, you know, I've speaking to a few people um, from Dundee last night. They know where they're going. They know that uh, the one thing that has constantly been mentioned to me over the last couple of weeks, and I don't know how it's managed to get to this, but it's Dundee and the word shambolic behind the scenes. Now, how has that been allowed to happen? But now you're in a situation where they too need to make big decisions in the summer. They do. There's no question at all about it. I think there'll be a new manager brought in. But I'll tell you, you know, first half, they played some really good football at Pataudry. And had they gone in one or two goals up, nobody could have complained. And if they can translate that first half showing into three 90-minute performances, you never know because St Johnston are in free fall at the moment. Uh, but uh, I think when you talk about shambolic, Charlie Adam, 52nd minute, substituted. Now, a blind man could see that Charlie Adam was far and away the best player in the middle of the park for Dundee, yet Mark McGee pulled him off and then spoke to the press afterwards and when he was asked, you know, Charlie wasn't happy, oh, go and ask Charlie Adam about it. Uh, it's my decision. I'm not going to explain it to you. And, and, and just, you know, the hackles were up with Mark and you just think, well, if that is the mood in your dressing room, you're not going to stay up. They've got to be all in it together. And I thought that substitution just said to everyone, this is a sinking ship. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, as ever, Andrew, uh, still got a couple of weeks to have a wee natter with you before the before the microphone is uh, hung up, Ruffy. Um, we need to get him down for a night out, by the way, because uh, the look of everybody's face on here and Ali is just at this moment um, just about to... So she's trying her best to hold off from the scene from The Exorcist when, <laughs> <laughs> when she just... <laughs> no, no more drink for you, Ali, for a while. Well. <laughs> we, need, we need to get Andrew down for a night. Yeah. Yes. Don't we, you know? Yeah, it's been great all year. You know, Absolutely. gives us an insight and everything that's happening up there. So yeah, but I'm, I'm sure we can get a first bus pass for him or something. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so many. Well, and the good thing is... Uh, Make sure this is the bus that you get a free scone. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. And uh, first boss, that's a good shout, Ruffy, because Andrew knows it only costs a quid. So, <laughs> so he'll break into his baptism money. Anyway, Andrew Shiny, brilliant. Thank you for joining us on that. Um, I think Dundee know they, they're, uh, and as Andrew mentioned there, Charlie, best player in the park. I, I can, I mean, he's going to be here this week, but I can see him hanging up the boots. I think we're, we're witnessing the last couple of games of him in the dark blue of his favourite team. Yeah, and I think he would have been frustrated going off after that amount of time. I think you'll still feel as though he carries a bit of influence in the middle of the park that he could have conjured up something just to, to have a, a positive element to hang on to, to, to have a focal point going into the last few games of the campaign. But I think essentially it was a must-win game. I think Dundee had to take the win, really, to have any realistic chance. But I think uh, they look like a, they've looked like a team in free fall for much of this season. They shouldn't have sacked James McPake. They shouldn't have sacked No, yeah. it's been a big, big, yeah. big mistake from the board to sack James McPake when they were still in with a chance. You know, and I think, what's that, 12 or 13 games and Mark McGee's not won a game. Yeah. It's been a terrible decision from the Dundee board to, to get rid of McPake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and some people will say they deserve everything they're getting. Uh, Chad says, how much do the panel talk about nights out, man? Well, Chad, that's what <laughs> happens when you've got mates. <laughs> um, you can go nights out. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll keep talking about them. The longer we're invited, yeah, the more we're invited to them, yeah. Ruffy. Uh, tune in next Monday because there's another one <laughs> next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we love a night out. Everybody who's in football loves a night out, for God's sake. I was uh, I, I was sitting there, Charlie and I, <clears throat> last night, just propping up the bar with the big man, uh, Paul Elliott. Um, mm -hmm. And he still looked he still looked as if he could play centre-half. Yeah, I remember him playing for Celtic. Good player, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Decent player, I Played with Chelsea as well, didn't he? Really the road. good player, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. What's he doing now? Is he working with the PFA? Does he work with the uh, PFA England, does it? Yeah. And he yeah. comes up regularly every year. Um, and what he does last night, he, he just basically walked around like a, an absolute god. I mean, he, just, <laughs> he, looked, he just looked sensational, didn't he, the big man? He's getting old. Look, well, I don't mean old looking. Oh, well, but, um, well, there you are. Not that well, then, not. Not that well. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> All the best to you, Paul. Have a safe journey back. <laughs> Just the, the white hair and stuff. Yeah. Did you see white hair? He's a bit of white hair. Have you been a white hair? I never saw that. The big man was looking magnificent. You're really anyway. well owned by that point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everybody, everybody had white hair. <laughs> <laughs> In your book, Ali, you couldn't see straight. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, that's Dundee uh, and the predicament there. Elsewhere, Tam... Livingston, <laughs> oh, I know you are, Livingston with a, a good goal to win it for them, but did they deserve it? Yeah, probably, probably. Um, Hibs, again, you know, I feel as if I'm the repeat every week, you know, the, the loads of the ball, you know, get, played some nice football, got to the final third, could have played to midnight and no scored. Uh, 18 shots in goal and zero in target. Uh, and lose one nothing. So I think that's where the problems are with Hibs. It have been all season, you know, since they, they sold Martin Boyle um, and Doyle injured, Nisbet injured, James Scott works hard. He's not good enough for Hibs. He's not going to be there the next season. The boy Melkerson's got a bit of development to do as well. So for me, three games left, I'd be giving some young players a chance at Hibs. I think that's the opportunity now is there to give the fans a lift. Give the fans a lift for next season. Give them a wee look at the boys that are doing well in under 18s. They're top of their league. Give them a wee opportunity, you know, and the fans could come in. I can remember, you know, Derek Riordan and, and Scott Brown. You know, we, me and Gary O'Connor were playing against Aberdeen and both of these came off injured in the bottom six in the first half and Riordan and Brown come on and two of them were brilliant. And me and Big Gaz never got replaced place back for a while. So that that's just, that happens. Throw them in, give them an opportunity. The fans will get behind them because they have nothing to lose. I mean, they can't score a goal, they can't get a shot on target. Give some of the younger boys a wee opportunity. 
Yeah, um, the other thing about it as well is in many a club tells you the old spin on it, Ruffy, oh, we're waiting to, to get the right man. Um, and and I'm, I'm hearing all sorts of ridiculous names for this one. It's going to have to be someone who takes the job with the guidelines that they've stipulated, which is quite simply, you better turn around quickly and we'll decide some of the players that are coming in. Yeah, and by all accounts, I've been down in London for the last fortnight interviewing people. I mean, obviously, they've kept it very quiet who, they, who who's getting the interviews, but you're right. It has to be somebody comes in with these conditions or it has to be somebody coming in looking to step up the ladder and take these conditions, you know, with a chance that it might work. And that's when Malky comes into the scenario. What does Malky feel as if he needs to do to get back to where he was? He's done remarkably well with Ross County. I think he needs to make another bigger step before the big boys down south take notice of him. So he might just say to himself, if he's offered the Hibs job, I'll take these conditions and, and hope that I can turn it around. Yeah, um, Gordon McLean says they shouldn't have sacked Jack Ross, and I think that's the general cons you know, consensus on that Absolutely. one, isn't it? I, I think you're talking about uh, decisions made at Dundee in mm. a similar vein, and I, I think it's been a, a costly call. I think they got the decision to, to sack Jack Ross wrong. I thought uh, then if you make a decision to give it to an up-and-coming manager who's time. never had a senior job, then I, ha I think it goes with the caveat that you must give them time to get it right and four months was never going to be is, that. Is it just a coincidence that the, the three clubs have done not particularly well with managers or the three American-owned clubs with owners from America? Yeah. Dundee, Aberdeen and Hibs. Well, well, not necessarily because it hasn't quite worked out for St Mirren at the moment with uh, Stephen Robinson. He's not exactly setting the head on fire. I mean, boy, did they need a win yesterday, or uh, Saturday, sorry. Yeah, that game could have went either way. I don't think any of the two of them looked particularly good uh, and they got the result. But that's what happens when you're down there. You don't get any breaks at all. And uh, they keep thinking they're going to bring somebody back into it. But no, now St Mirren and Aberdeen are too far away. They'll have to accept that they keep trying in the next three games to stay away from Dundee. Yeah, um, St Mirren, they're, they're, I mean, I think a lot of them know Stephen Robinson's been talking about bringing his own players in, mm. so the writing's on the wall. Yeah, well, that was a huge result for them uh, to go up there. You know, I've seen them the previous week against Hibs, when I feared the worst of them, to be honest, but to go up with St Johnston and get that win, I think it just gives them a wee bit of breathing space. It's always difficult, I think, when a manager comes in, the team's down there, Terry Butcher was the same at Hibs. You know, you need to watch what you're saying in the press and what you're saying in the papers because players can mentally down tools and if you do that and you go on a, on a run like Hibs done, you end up relegated. So I'm sure that Stephen Robinson will be desperate to get to the summer and he'll be looking to bring in seven, eight, nine of his own players and get the same out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just obviously, we do ask you if you're on our feed to try and be uh, careful with your words and careful with, um, obviously, uh, your opinion on certain things. Double D has said Ruffy's being racist. It's nothing to do with being racist. You need to un actually understand what the word means. He's talking about the mindset of American owners who just want that quick fix on it. Yeah, yeah, they want the managers. Well, Aberdeen brought glass in and weren't very durable there, you know, and we're talking about Jack Ross at, at Hibs, same owners reacted very, very quickly. Is it more to do with the actual understanding of our game and the mentality of being able to give people the time? Is that? Yeah, I think it's a different mentality in America. You know, I keep mentioning it, and I'm only going back a long time when I was there and yeah. Tom was there as well. The franchise system that they use over there, it's nothing that it's, it doesn't come near what we do, what we tolerate. No players in contract, they think that if a player, there's a way out of moving them somewhere else, they'll move them. Yeah. And they think they can get away with it, but it doesn't work over here. The contracts are all different. Yeah, mm. Double D says, I was only joking. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Thanks, Double D. That's really, really good of you. My way, Ruffy's face went, went chalk white. No, I know. I'm so, well, it <laughs> whatever I said, it doesn't need have to, I know, it doesn't need to be, by the way, because at the end of the day, I, do, I understand where Double D's coming from, but for God's sake, if you're going to post something, you know, Make sure your uh, your brain is attached to your fingers before you start typing, uh, because I mean, you know what it's like. That's Everybody that's steams why, in. You know, next minute Ruffy's in. Next type. Yeah, I'm going to say <laughs> exactly. I know. Next minute Ruffy's in here, and everybody's expecting him to have a, a Ku Klux Klan helmet on. Um, but anyway, he's um, he's far from that. Uh, I have to tell you. Um, but apart from any, apart from apart from anything else, uh, the other game, Dundee United edged it with a deflection, but they still got uh, the win over Motherwell. I tell you. 
I've never witnessed so many clubs where we're talking about managers that are not flavour of the month that people are thinking, hmm, and Graham Alexander's one of them. I think that's without a win. Is that, what, 15 games or something? It's a, it's a real stretch. Yeah. To be fair, I thought they were very unlucky on Saturday not to take something from it. That's a game that I was at. I think um, they hit the post twice. Benjamin Segrist had a really good save from a, a Ross Tierney header too. Just in the, the latter stages of the game, I thought they deserved probably a point out of it on the balance of play. Um, but I think sometimes when you're in that kind of mired in that results, it's very difficult to dig it out. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one win in ten is not great at, at, at times. See, but see, the thing about Peter is the the football lasts the whole season. Yeah. It's the points you have at the end of the season. And the unfortunate thing is, like a team can go really well in the first half of the season and amass all these points. Yeah. And then the second half, you don't get any points and people are very critical. Yeah. But you're not critical when they're winning all the points. Do you no, get where I, I'm coming no, from? No, no, you, the, the, I get the, your uh, point, but the problem you're is... You're not going to have a fantastic run all the way through the season. You're going to have a good bit, a bad bit, and a different bit. It depends when you have them. Absolutely. So he's had a great bit, but the problem with that situation is... If you've got, as you suggest, American owners, when you have your bad oh, yeah. bit, you're sacked. No, that's, that's what happens. That's not an American owner. No, I know, but... See, but, he's, but they're realistic. They're saying, right, <clears throat> we've just still got a chance of Europe. Yeah. We're on a 1 in 10, but we're still in there. So there's, there has to be a reason why they are still there. Yeah. yeah you've got to start poorly and finish strongly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, the, I, the I opposite. want to bring our scenario into it. We were magnificent for two-thirds of the season. Unbelievable. Unbeatable in he some just gets past it thistle, did he? Oh, it's unbelievable. Shoot yeah, horns him in every the time. third, we haven't been particularly good. Yeah. But you've got to assess it over the whole... The, whole the business end of the season. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, That's Ali, when you don't want it. Dundee United, it looks as if they could be in, in line for some European football. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, I think they're in a very commanding position now, going into the last three games. I think they'll be delighted with that. Another team that... There were maybe some some doubts about last season, and then when Tam Courts got the job, I think there were there were a few people very dubious about his credentials to go and take it. I think again, if you talk about what Ruffy's just said there about judging him over the entirety of the campaign, I think he'll be delighted with course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about. I want your opinion on obviously um, before you guys go about uh, Rangers uh, in the Europa League, the Predictor League. It's getting now down to, what are we on, to the last three games? Three games, Ruffy, yeah. three games. Sorry, I'm trying to work that out. And by the way, I think now, Ruffy, it's fair to say, in the last three games, all of us have to post separately to uh, the adjudicator <laughs> our predictions. You better explain to me how I do that. Well, basically, what I want you to do is... <laughs> can't even work his phone. <laughs> uh, what I want you to do is send a private text to our adjudicator, Cheryl, and she will then have yours submitted without anybody else seeing them. Or she them. won't post all the other yes. ones at the one And time. the reason for that, why <laughs> yeah, am I suggesting wow. that? Because you want to win because you're such a bad loser. <laughs> well, I want to yeah. win, but I know how devious Alison is. She'll look at other people and I see and think... For, I usually post first and you... You posted last at the weekend. I did, but... one game but wrong. There's three, yes. there's three, there's, there's three games to go. Quiet. Right, Ruffy? Mm -hmm. And Alison, who usually posts first, will think... How can I safely engineer enough points to win this? So she starts copying what you and I are well, saying. Right. That's you, what you happens when you're seven well. points clear, Ali. And there were some, yeah. some people the weekend getting a wee bit desperate calling for Rule 44 with you were putting the wrong team in. Your yeah, scoreline, yeah. the Rule 44. Yeah. Yeah. Subsection 29. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, look at, look, let's have a look at the old Predictor League just to see... Uh, Alison <coughs> out in front on 298, uh, Ruffy on 291, I'm on 288, and then it's Tam on 267 with Hugh McDonald, and then Tam Cowan on 255, and it's it's really good because apparently a little bit of breaking news, one of our former reporters, Gabriel, who's such a good lad, uh, has last night offered to go halfers with Tam uh, because obviously... He put him in the mire. Put him in the mire. <laughs> and he, because he was fairly well on when yeah, that conversation was, yeah, absolutely. took place. But by the way, he said it, there was witnesses, so... That's a shocker, that means he'll have to come. Well, that's a very good, <laughs> very good point, actually. Let's just get... He's hearing. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just get... Uh, yeah. He was hearing it last night? Did he? No, no, no he didn't. No, no. Oh, no, no are you kidding with us there? No danger. You're going to get absolutely battered. Um, but that's the, predict the, the predictor at the moment, and Alison, with three games left, in the box seat, all she has to do is somehow engineer uh, enough points and she's won it, but at the bottom end, 
you know, whoever's last takes everyone out for a meal. Uh, Ruffy, before we talk about the PFA Awards of last night, the winners, uh, what about Leipzig against Rangers? I, mm-hmm. I have a feeling, because I, I watched that second half display by Rangers, I thought they were very assured against Celtic, there was a confidence about them. Uh, I like the boy Lundstrom because he, you know he looks as if he's he looks as if he stays behind and just plays forty yard diagonals mm-hmm. all the time. I think Rangers can win this at Ibrox. I think they can win it as well, but can they win it way enough? You know we spoke about it last week. I think Rangers need to score three goals because I, th- I think Leipzig will score. Wow! Uh, and Leipzig, as we spoke about it last week, they scored three. Who was it against? Is it real show? Show Sociedad, Sociedad and Atlanta. Two Atlanta mm. too. So that you would assume that they are going to score. They might not. I'm just assuming. If they do score, that's them two nothing. So I think Rangers need three goals to beat them. Alison, I think how the opening 15, 20 minutes plays out will be significant. I think if Leipzig get to go and get a second goal, there's a danger that that Rangers go all out attack, and then I think they're the kind of team that could do some damage and, and exploit the space. But I think if Rangers contain them and play the way that they did in Germany, they frustrated them for, for long spells, then I think they'll grow in belief. But what one thing that I think you would have to point out about the current Rangers team and what you would have to applaud is is the resilience that you've seen come through in recent weeks. I think uh, going into the Scottish Cup semi-final on the back of 120 minutes on the Thursday night and then again going to Celtic Park, I think... When Celtic went one up yesterday, you, they could have folded. I think uh, you know you, you could have capitulated in the environs that they were in. I think you would have to. I think what you'd have to acknowledge is that they have something about them as a team, and what maybe they lack in terms of of tacti- tactical and technical footballers. What they have is a character within the squad. Whether or not that's enough uh, on Thursday night, you'll have to wait and see. Yeah, is it enough? Give me a prediction. I think possibly. Yeah. yeah. I think they could go through. Yeah. I think uh, possibly. Uh, another thing about it, a great little line here from Michael Crooks that says, uh, Peter and Ruffy, you, ha- you better have a glazer on standby with that prediction. <laughs> Right, well, it's basically say I'm going to tan your windows. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, Michael, you'll be hard pressed because Ruffy and I don't have windows in our caravans where we're living. <laughs> so, so on you go. Um, anyway, apart, apart from anything else, it's down to you. Ali says they go through. I say they go through. You say I, they're not I, going I, through. No, I never said that. I said what they'll have to do is score three goals well, to make it safe. I know. So I'm hoping Leipzig don't score right. and Rangers win 2 0. Well, give us Oh, you, 2-0 Rangers yeah. that's your prediction yeah. three of us think Rangers are going to win this um, I don't I think that Leipzig will be too strong I think that the first as Ali said the first 15-20 minutes is absolutely crucial Rangers have came out the blocks flying you know in the previous two encounters Braga and Restart Belgrade and they've got their noses in front um, I just think I just think Leipzig will be too strong as I said they've scored three at Man City they've scored two at PSG you know, two at Atlanta, three at Sociedad, they're a strong side away from home. And I think that the fact that the matter is that goal last week has really changed the perception of the game for Rangers. Because I think if it was nil nil, Rangers could have just sat in a little bit more. I think with this goal, the Rangers fans will be, will be wanting to bomb on and get the goal. I think that will leave gaps for a quality Leipzig team and I think they'll just fall short. Yeah, great message here. Uh, again, just gives you an indication. Lots of people thinking Rangers can do it. Um, uh, one guy says Rangers will win on penalties. Could be a woman, I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, Rangers will win on penalties and Tav will take all five of them. Which, which by the way, other people. Well, I was going to say, if, <laughs> if Tav takes all five of them, that's five goals because he's brilliant at penalties. Stephen McNeil, on the other hand, says 5 0 Leipzig. So. <laughs> So not a Rangers the, fan. The great, the great <laughs> divide is there for everybody to offer their opinion on. Absolutely fantastic. Um, we wish them well. It's good to get the opinion so far. As things progress, we see how they do against Bruce and Munchen Gladbach. There might be a shift of opinion the closer we get to Thursday. Okay, brilliant. Thanks to everybody for their messages. PFA last night. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a great honour to be able to host the event um, and get to chat to people who are handing out awards and the winners as well and Ange Postacoglu picked up manager of the year I thought his chat was brilliant I think he's adapted so quickly to 
Scotland, the culture, his family's over, he's happy and the team plays the way he wants them to play and suddenly, from a transitional season, he's on the verge of winning the title. Yeah, he has transformed everything, you know, because I don't think anybody knew much about him. I don't think anybody had a lot of belief that he could do that turn around uh, that he did, uh, but he did do it. And uh, I don't think anybody imagined the, the Japanese players coming in were going to be an instant success. That worked for him as well. And the players that he had there already, players he brought in, you know, have all turned up. And as you keep saying, it's an overturn of what, 23 points for last year. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing turnaround. Yeah. And as, as we I think see, it's 25. Yeah, they lost the league by 25 points. Yeah. 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 And as we see, I mean, Rangers are a quality side this year. They've proved that uh, there are no mugs. So to still be ahead of them, it just shows you how much he's, he's turned everything around. 31 point turnaround so far. Yeah. And you and Celtic lost three of the first six league games. Yeah. I think they've been a brave good. man to go Rangers, for. Rangers have yep. only lost twice. Mm. Like yeah, that. but there was a there was a period just in the festive period where I just thought they let it slip, you know. Rangers, and Rangers. After, after, after the break, after, after the break, because yeah, yeah. he went in, it was a six point cushion just yeah. going in yeah. to the break. Celtic drew to St Mirren just before the just before Christmas, I think, and then obviously all the COVID situation had re-emerged, and there was a, the earlier shutdown of, of the campaign just to try and make sure that there were full crowds back in whenever football got underway. I think. But, uh, yeah, it's a remarkable turnaround. And I think when you consider the chaos of last summer and bringing players in and not knowing where they were going to fit in and knowing that there were key players who were going out, you think like Ryan Christie and, and Odson Edward that you knew were, were going to leave the club, I think the uncertainty of it was difficult, which was probably reflected in the opening few few weeks of the campaign. I think Celtic lost three games and drew one in the, across mm. our first seven games or something. Yeah. Uh, just talking about 11 points dropped just in the, the early stages and playing catch up immediately from that first night at Tynecastle being on the back foot. I think you'd have to say it's been a, a, an impressive recovery. I think maybe since October they've only dropped six points, yeah. a couple of draws since October. It, the consistency is the form of a championship winning team. And his chat's good, Ruffy, because last night, Tom, he didn't have the uh, he didn't have his bog standard jumper on, which his wife has been caning him for. <laughs> he, he looked he looked yeah. his clobber was in top draw. His clobber was yeah, top was good. He likes a good laugh. Yeah, he was good. Uh, sometimes of when you're a foreign manager and you come in, you have to watch what you're saying. But he was very relaxed last night. He was yeah. very comfortable and then you were asking him and, and most of these answers were quite good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Callum McGregor, um, I think, is a different captain from Scott Brown. Uh, is a different type of leader. Uh, for me, he's the best midfielder in Scotland. I said it about oh, four months ago and I got absolutely battered for it, but I stand by it. He's player of the year. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's a wonderful player. I've always liked Callum McGregor. I think he's a tremendous player. And as you said, Scott Brown was more a snarling presence in the Celtic midfield. Yeah. I thought Craig Gordon should have got player of the year. I That was their vote last week, uh, Tam. I thought Craig Gordon was, was player it? of the year. But, but this I, guy... I said McGregor. Yeah, McGregor is player of the year because they gave him the award last night. But as a midfielder, for me, pff, I'd take him every day of the week. Absolutely. I think he's, I think he's underrated as well. I think he could play anywhere, Callum McGregor. I know he's at Celtic and... I'm absolutely certain that there's clubs in England who would love to take him, but I just think he's comfortable here. I think he's going to end up, you know, playing his whole career at Celtic. He's another you know, being a one club player. Yep, mm. he'll play yeah, all, all his career. At but Tam, see, as a player, and you know this better than anybody, see, if you, see when you watch a back line who are looking up and thinking, where am I going with this? Isn't it a joy to have a mid a midfielder who comes short and gives you that pass which takes it out there? Do you know what yeah, I mean? He, 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 knits, he, knits, he knits the play brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's, he's quite quick as well over the ground. You know, he, he runs away, I think he ran he away for somebody in the weekend there. And I'm thinking, wow. You know, so he's quick over the ground as well. He's, he's got everything he can put his foot in. Great left foot, can score goals. Nah, he's a, he's a, he's a terrific player. Yeah, the young player of the year was Leal Abada, uh, Ruffy. Um, I don't think Leal, obviously Leal comes from Israel. And I don't think he's quite... Up to speed if you take the microphone off somebody yeah. for Lanarkshire. I thought, I, I'm going to, I'll batter this yeah. boy here if he just yeah. give, give me my mic back. <laughs> <laughs> but he, there you are, yeah. thank you very much, everybody. On you go. Yeah, he's quite a confident boy, doesn't he? You know, but you get that, you know, you get he's that. He's 15 With goals youth, and about yeah. 11 assists. He's yeah. been, what no, a I think he's been super. Uh, and he was in and out, in and out. And any time he came in, 
scored goals and the, to score that amount of goals, you know, when you're not playing every week, uh, it's fantastic and it, it, he's a great prospect because once he gets this year under his belt, he'll be better. Yeah, absolutely. Well done to the Championship Player of the Year, Michael McKenna. Um, I think he's bagged about 15 goals this season. He's, he, you know, do you know what I loved about him? His humility. I yeah, can't yeah. believe I've won it. I'm 31 years of age. I thought my chance had gone. He said, "I thought I'd never thought this day would never come." Brilliant, yeah, I wasn't thought, it? Uh, and he thanked his teammates as well for yeah, for getting which there. some players across, don't do. Thought he came across very well. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Russell, <laughs> oh, big Al, big Al. It's all about me. <laughs> I thought he came across very well. Well, if you carried Christina Aguilera on the stage, like Alan Russell done at the MTV Awards in Glasgow, then you'd be the same. Did he? Yes. You remember the MTV Awards were in Glasgow? It was MTV yeah, or yeah. some rewards. Aye, that. Well, Alan Russell used to, he was a model as well. He yeah. modelled. And uh, he was one of the, the guys that carried Christina Aguilera onto the stage. Some guys are just so lucky. He's so spawny. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting in a, in, beside a pool um, and, and I looked at this guy over the far side and Alan's a good lad, I, I've come across him on many occasions but I saw this guy with the, the Ray-Bans on Ruffy looking like uh, and, uh, Andrew, um, George Michael and Andrew Ridgely uh -huh. in Club Tropicana, the video, <laughs> uh, you know, with no top on and the six pack and I looked over and I thought, and, and I thought, God, just look at him, he's a bit full of himself, you know, obviously I had a duffel coat on. <laughs> <laughs> Because I ain't got his body. I, 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 I played again. He went to LA uh, and he was working in LA. He was modelling in LA and playing in LA. Is that right? And we played them when I was with uh, a team for New York. We played them over and played in LA and I went out with him for dinner and all that. And I loved it over. Oh. It was a perfect lifestyle for him in LA. Absolutely. Oh. Ah, he's a good lad, actually. Really nice Aye. lad. Um, and, and he shouted, he shouted over, hey, Peter, and I looked and I thought, oh, there he is, big shiner. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he's good at football and good looking and a six pack alley. <laughs> Wouldn't it make you sick, you know? <laughs> uh, Dylan Easton picked up the League One Player of the Year as well. Uh, not only the goals that he scored, but it's, it's fine if you've, got, if you've got a couple of players there that can bang in goals that you can supply as well. Yeah, indeed, you kind of put him on the spot, didn't you? Is that the, that the boy put in the spot about what's coming next for him? Oh, he's, he's on his way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I said to him, Tom, you worry him, 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 him about how he. No, I don't care. Yeah, uh, he, uh, he, he wins the award, and I said, well, every League One player of the year in the last 10 years has been off. Are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> was Big Ned there? Was Ian Murray there? No, because he did a bang. Oh, he was. <laughs> Ian Murray was. Oh, was he? Was oh, well, well, I must have avoided him. <laughs> so I, yeah. could, I was just watching his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be getting the call from him. And by the way, the uh, Joe, I love Joe Cardle as a player. You let him oh, go. Yeah. Your team haven't got a clue yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, he's a Mr. Shyness as well. He came up with Joe. a full time. Oh, Joe looked great. Fake teeth, teeth and all that. Yeah, and turkey and, teeth. And, and away for football, he does fantastic work away for football. Yeah, why did you let him go? He's a good player. Uh, well, if the manager makes these decisions, I don't let them go. Yeah, absolutely. If you'd have kept, kept him? Yeah. Uh, as a pool player, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, manager uh, made the wrong decision? Not really, no. Yeah, no. okay. Joe Cardo won the League <laughs> 2 Player of the Year. Um, <laughs> um, the goal of the season, Ali, I'm not even Tom Rogic, there was about three there was about three great goals I elsewhere. Were, Ronan's goal for St Mirren, come on. I thought there was a few very, very but I thought all the goals were yeah. good. I, thought, I, I would have to say, I thought the, the selection was good, the quality was high, but yeah, it, there were Rogic. a few. I think the Celtic fans have just jumped to. on the Sky Sports website. Yeah you, yeah, you have to say to yourself, what is it more difficult to do? Hit a, hit a dead ball or go by four or five people with the ability? Yeah. You have to sort of... Oh, listen, Rogic is great, close control, but I thought there were better goals. I mean, what about the boy? Was it was it Jake Doyle Hayes? Yeah, the perhaps. The yeah, chest, yeah. 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 Wally into the roof of the net. Yeah, the boy Dylan Levitt last week. What a goal that was for Dundee United. United. Yeah. There's lots why of good all, goals. Why didn't have a save of the season? Because people are bored out of their nut, but then they don't want to start talking about goalkeepers. It's what you're meant to do, just keep the ball at the net, it's yeah. not hard. Saves, pay to do. Just get in the road of a ball. Goals. Well, do you know what? Get in the road of a ball. Because they, they need 10. They need 10 <laughs> saves. Oh, you should have 10 of Craig Gordon well, this year. I was going to say, well, you should be as well giving him the award then. They call it the Craig Gordon yeah. Award. Um, but uh, the other thing about last night, which I think is well worthy of us commenting on just before we go, is quite simply, Ali, that the women are under the PFA umbrella and it was the first year uh, that women were awarded the PFA Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year and the Young Player of the Year was Jacinta Garabada Arachi. Uh, she has been, you know, magnificent for Celtic and just seeing her coming up and 
thanking all our teammates. It was great to see her winning it and a, a Aussie as well. Yeah, I think it's just important. The 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 game is trying to progress and, and keep pace. I think uh, it says a lot that you now offer the, the same award, and it's the same with the, with the Football Writers Awards next week. We've got a, a Scottish Women's International Player of the Year too, and, and, and Caroline Weir, and and I think it just helps to progress the game and, and keep it visible and keep it moving in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And well done to Priscilla Chinchilla as well, who came up on stage because she was the first ever Women's Player of the Year. Um, Tam, it was great to see her up there. She was she was absolutely delighted, Ruffy, just absolutely taken aback by the whole affair. I'm actually surprised she actually made it because uh, Patrick Thistle ladies played them in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup at Falkirk in the afternoon yep. and her wee fullback kicked her all over the place. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't handle her, she just couldn't get near her, she had so much ability and the only way, as you know, is if you can't handle them, you just kick yeah, them. Kick them. Yeah, kick them. <laughs> well, uh, Celtic will play Glasgow City in the uh, Scottish Women's Cup final and Rangers, I have to say, congratulations to them because Ali, they're, they're, they're on the verge now of winning. Yeah, that's They've eight stopped eight Glasgow clear. City's dominance. Eight points clear. It's not quite done yet. I think there's three games left for Glasgow City Rangers. I've got two, uh, but they meet uh, next Sunday. So I think Rangers would only need a point to confirm them as champions and, and break. Glasgow City strong. Am I, am I right in think. saying that some of them are now full time professionals? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely amazing how that's progressed in the last couple of years. Just There's just two or three of them, just the Celtic Rangers. Glasgow Celtic City. and Rangers and some at Glasgow City. It's not all, it's not quite across semi, the board. Um, I think there's a few, I know a few girls I spoke to hadn't wanted to, to go full time, like have worked pretty yeah. hard to establish themselves in good careers and are, uh, still work hard to get the balance of it. Kelly Clark. Celtic's captain is an accountant and I think uh, still tries to combine both of them. Um, but I think uh, I think sometimes when you hear stories of women that have played and juggled careers at the same time, it's quite an eye-opener into the sacrifices that were needed to try and play at the top level and juggle the demands of, of keeping bosses happy and <coughs> taking time off to go in tournaments and pre-season and things like that. I don't know that you always appreciate how, how difficult that can be. Yeah, absolutely. So we have mentioned, uh, well done to Rangers uh, and Jimmy Duff. Uh, don't jump in too early, Jimmy, the, when we do the rotor. We mention everybody on this game, so <laughs> we like to try and give everybody um, the, um, what do you call it, merit that they deserve. Uh, special merit award winner last night was Frank Riley. It would be wrong of me to just say Frank is an administrator in the SFA because he's much, much more than that yeah. to so many players, managers, down through the years at international level for Scotland. Yeah, and he's been there so long. He's a link between the, the players and the management and possibly everything else that goes along. He looks as if he's that kind of guy that would take on everything when they go away. He's in control uh, where they're staying, what they're doing, you know, and uh, the good thing about it is I think the, the players really bought into everything he did and that's good to have somebody like that there. OK, last three minutes. I'm going to make it uneasy <coughs> for you, Ruffy. Some of your fans are an absolute disgrace. All right. I thought the treatment handed out to Richard Foster was absolutely disgraceful. You're in the playoffs. Yeah. You're in the playoffs and you've got a fan who... and. Some of the comments that were made to Richard Foster, I think all of us would have been held back by our teammates. Yep. You know, not only about his wife, but uh, you know, some of it sectarian in nature towards him. Um, and I'm amazed that he didn't manage to get to the fan who was abusing him. He, this is a side who's come up. You know better than anybody. You've come up from the the lower league into the championship, and you get to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, but that's the unfortunate thing about football. In every football club, there's somebody who lets the, the supporters down, the majority of supporters. I really do hope he's identified and will be punished accordingly, uh, as every other club would do as well. And it is incredible, you know, that players have to suffer that kind of abuse. It is, and, and it's, 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 obviously it's where, where they were trained, where they stripped and all that because of COVID. You're not going right into your home dressing room. You're having to go by the... The, the supporters like remember yeah. Aberdeen had to go by the Mungo yeah. and it's it's so close too close for comfort you know when you get supporters like that yeah, yeah. people f f filming it as well mm. yeah social Absolutely. media can be horrible at times. Uh, uh, well I'll give you an example now somebody says no I don't agree with his his language is slightly choice when he says Fozzie you lost it absolutely you lost it you lost it because the torrent of abuse and the the actual content of the abuse 
was absolutely disgraceful. You know, never mind the sectarian nature of it, but some of the stuff towards his wife. Um, I don't know too many people who would be, you know, sitting there not taking the old Will Smith approach on it. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be going for them, you know, and it's, it's they think they're sa safety in numbers because I know amongst all the other supporters, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> he'd have bottled it if Richard Foster was coming towards him, however it was that, that shouted, if he wasn't getting held back, because it's out of order. And people think they can shout, oh, pay, I pay my money, I can shout what I want, I can, you know. No, you can't, you can't do that, you wouldn't do it in the street. Yeah. Because you get a down or you get arrested. Anyway, apart from anything else, say their piece on it. I think you're right, Ravi, I think 100% on that. Um, I've just had a wee check. Um, taxis will be here in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so we may as well just crack on again. <laughs> uh, open up another bottle of red. Um, sorry, Chad, I know you don't like the thought of another night out. Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, thoroughly enjoyed it. Great uh, for everybody at the PFA Scotland. There were so many people who uh, really stepped up to the plate from uh, Susie van der Post and all the guys in the background. Chris Higgins, a former player. Uh, lots of people who actually as part of the PFA made it such a special night and the players thoroughly enjoyed it as well we had a really good laugh great with the managers too thoroughly enjoyed it and um, congratulations to all the winners and all the people picking up special merit as well um, great to have so many of you there and see so many f great faces I think we had a right good night Ali I can tell by your face we had a right good night we enjoyed it you can buy your bed Ali <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm roughly going straight to bed after the show. So, <laughs> so I make no bones about it. Thanks to Ruffy, thanks to Tam, and to Alison McConnell. And thanks to you. Hit the subscribe button if you get a chance. We'd love you to join the football family. And thank you to so many of you who are supporting us on a regular basis. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the season, but there's much more to come on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Lots of exclusive interviews on the way, uh, as well as if you download the app, all the breaking football stories. So we'll see you tomorrow.